Have you ever looked north and wondered what the constellations were that you were looking at? And have you ever noticed that they're there all the time, whether it's the winter, summer, spring or autumn? You might be familiar with some of them. Some of them, you know, they are quite uh, popular and people will know definitely the plough. You may not know the whole of the constellation Ursa Major, but you may recognise those seven stars that look like a great big saucepan. This saucepan is an asterism within the whole of the constellation of Ursa Major. What's an asterism? An asterism is an informal pattern of stars. Now, it could be a pattern within a bigger pattern of, say, like the plough in Ursa Major, or could it even cross boundaries of constellations like the Summer Triangle? The three brightest stars in the Summer Triangle are from actually three different constellations. So the plough is quite important really, especially if you want to navigate by the stars. The seven stars make up a distinct handle and a pan. Now what we're going to do is go to the edge of the pan or furthest away from the handle. The bottom star is a star called Merak and the top star is called Dube. What you need to do is draw an imaginary line from Merak through Dube and keep going until you see the next brightest star. This star is called Polaris, the Pole Star, the North Star, and you guessed it, it points north. You can think of the North Star as the point directly above the North Pole on Earth. Okay, think of the Earth. It's got to stick right the way through it, right from the South Pole to the North Pole. It's sticking out. I've got a pencil here to show you. It's not directly, it's tilted like that. That is the axis, and around that the Earth will rotate. So, you see where my pencil is pointing? That is pointing to Polaris on the North Celestial Pole. Well, Polaris is not exactly on the North Celestial Pole. It's within one degree, so it's close enough, isn't it? And it's the star that does not appear to move in the night sky. All the rest of the stars appear to move slowly around this star. And that is because the Earth is rotating on that axis, but pointing at that North Celestial Star. So where is Polaris? What constellation is Polaris in? It's in the constellation of Ursa Minor. Now, you'll be forgiven if you can't see Ursa Minor because it's not very distinct at all. But Polaris marks the end of the little bear's tail. If you look at the plough, it's a similar sort of shape, sort of saucepan shape, but we're really only looking at Polaris because that's the brightest of the stars and the most distinct. So as I say, you'll be forgiven if you can't see the pattern, but just make sure that you can find Polaris from those two stars, Merak and Dube in the plough. Another fairly familiar constellation in this part of the sky is Cassiopeia, the big W. Once you've found it, you will know where it is. How do you find it to begin with if you're struggling? We go straight back to the plough. We know the plough. We found Merak, we found Dube. We go all the way up with that imaginary line to the pole star. Then we carry on. Slight arc and about the same distance from Dube to Polaris as Polaris to Cassiopeia, then you will find the W. Cassiopeia, the big W, represents Queen Cassiopeia in mythology and she's supposed to be sitting in a chair. And a lot of the mythological drawings show her looking at herself in a mirror. She was pretty vain and she thought she was so beautiful, more beautiful than anything alive. So as a lesson in humility in the constellation of Cassiopeia, she sometimes hangs upside down. So you might think, why am I saying sometimes she looks upside down. Well, Queen Cassiopeia and the plough, you can see the whole of the year. It doesn't matter whether it's spring, summer, autumn or winter, they are always there. 
They are called circumpolar constellations and they never dip below the horizon. And that is because they're quite close to Polaris. And of course, as we said before, Polaris, you see it all the time and it looks like it's not actually moving in the sky. The circumpolar constellations will, as I said, appear all the time, whether it's spring, summer, autumn or winter. But they will appear in different areas at the different times of the year. For example, 10 o'clock in the summertime, Cassiopeia will be low on the horizon and the plough will be high above your head. In December, you'll have the great bear crawling along the northern horizon and Cassiopeia will be hanging upside down right above your head. There are other circumpolar constellations, not just Ursa Major, Ursa Minor and Cassiopeia. We do have Draco, the dragon, which snakes between the Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. And we also have King Cepheus, who is actually married to Queen Cassiopeia. There are other couple of indistinct constellations as well, called Lynx and Camelopardalus, but they are quite difficult to find. Don't think, though, that the circumpolar constellations that we see in our night sky here at about 50 degrees latitude are always going to be circumpolar in the rest of the world because they're not. The further south you go, then you'll start losing them as circumpolar constellations. They will dip below the horizon. If you go so far south that you're on the South Pole, you won't see any of our Northern Hemisphere constellations at all. You won't see the Plough, you won't see Cassiopeia. But if you're standing on the South Pole, all the constellations above your head, for unfamiliar as they are to us here in the Northern Hemisphere, they will all be circumpolar. So as you move from the South Pole and you come up and you're heading towards the North, you will start to see some of the Northern Hemisphere constellations. Now, when you get to the equator, you can see all the constellations, both Southern and Northern Hemisphere, but none of them will be circumpolar at all. In fact, Polaris is right on your horizon. That's a bit strange, isn't it? So if you lived on the North Pole, at the North Pole, and you looked up, Polaris would be right above your head. And all the Northern Hemisphere constellations would all be circumpolar. None of them would dip down below the horizon. It all sounds a bit complicated, isn't it? doesn't it? But it's not. It's all to do with the tilt of the Earth and the fact that it rotates. So you just leave that one with you and you have to have a good think about that.